Welcome back, everybody. My next guest, uh, believe it or not, has actually travelled through time and space to be with us this evening. He left Lambeth at six o'clock and he's here now. Please welcome <laughs> Professor Brian Cox. And you're too good looking to be a professor. What's going on? Oh, thank you. You're looking great in that suit. Uh, so, you're doing a new series. It's going to be no, called we... The Human Universe. Is Human that Universe. One? This yeah. is something before. I don't know if you cover this in the new series or not, but I've been reading online about science, about the universe, and they've discovered there's a telescope out there called the Kepler. Yeah. And they've discovered what they think is a solar system rather similar to ours. It's, it's, it's a space telescope, and its job is to look for planets beyond our solar system. You go back you know, 15 years or so, 20 years, we only knew of our solar system. So it's possible to believe that... Only 20 years ago, that's all we knew was yeah, our solar system. It's, it's possible to believe all those stars in the sky were just stars we didn't know. But now we've discovered over a thousand planets out there around stars. And this solar system you talked about, it's Kepler 90, I think it's called. That's right. Seven planets. Around that, around that star. But the, the remarkable thing, and this was announced about three weeks ago, so Kepler has been looking just at a little piece of sky to, to do a kind of a survey, a tiny piece of sky, and it found six Earth-like planets. So these are rocky planets in the right zone around the star, so the temperature's right, so there could be oceans and rivers. Wow. And if you just then extend that over the entire sky, the number now people are talking about is 20 billion Earth-like planets that could have a life in the Milky Way. 20,000 20, million other Earths out there. So there must be life out there. Well, you would think so. The, the huge question now is, so can we find microbes somewhere? We might find them on Mars. We're looking really seriously to see if there's life on Mars. But no, we know there's not life on Mars. Well, we don't. But I mean, not, yeah, but not proper life. I mean, <laughs> no, I'm, not sure. I'm very is... happy for your science people, but we couldn't care about my problem. <laughs> we want aliens. Well, this is... <laughs> Know that. This, has got a name. Down. this has got a name called the Fermi Paradox, after the physicist Enrico Fermi. Because now you know, 20 billion Earths, the, the, the galaxy has been around for almost the entire age of the universe, 13 billion years. Getting a headache. Why? <laughs> <laughs> the, the huge question is why we haven't seen evidence of another civilization. Do you think it's out there? You think it's out there, don't you? I think simple life, so microbes, we not may that, well find them. We're not back to that again, no, no one cares. <laughs> They I'm talking about imagine, something no. with fins and a scar, like hey, a <laughs> You know what I mean? Like <laughs> whoop, whoop, whoop. I thought you said fin, fins and a scarf. <laughs> <laughs> yes, they might have a scarf if they're on a cold planet like Chilly. Pluto. Not a planet anymore. But it, yeah, but it would be remarkable. <laughs> it would be remarkable if we found life on Mars and it had arisen separate, so it's different life. Yes. Even if it's single microbes, it would tell us that wherever Not the conditions are right, life can arise. How many times I've got to tell you? <laughs> well, how big does something have to be for you At to least find it? At least four and a half feet. <laughs> <laughs> anything, anything smaller than the little one out the crankies, I don't count. That's the micro. <laughs> right? It's got to be bigger than the girl in the crankies. So the mini, mini cranky yes, planet bigger is than not, that. You're not interested in that no, at all? No, anything bigger than that. Kepler 90G probably is mini cranky planet. Depends on the gravitational field. You could if just be big, making this up. If it's a big, huge planet, a big, massive planet, intense gravitational field, then the people will all be little. What? Yeah, because... Because you're, you're as big as you can be without the, the, the gravitation. You know what the, you're the, talking the, about. I, I'm just making it. <laughs> but yeah, there could be a cranky planet. So, so real giants could only be on a small planet. Probably, probably. Uh, weak gravity, then you can grow to a large. But you wouldn't size. get a lot of them because there's not a lot of space. Sorry. <laughs> 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 not really that big, is it? Well, it's not a planet, is it? But, uh, if you're saying just little... the really big planet, the little people, well, a really small planet, that big, one really big bloke, <laughs> really big, <cool. laughs> <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? That makes <laughs> some <laughs> sense to me. <laughs> and he's going to other planets to use the toilet. How did he evolve on a planet that big? Well, that's your job to find that out, Prof. <laughs> <laughs> I've done the hard work. <laughs> Um, okay, so, yeah. so we're going to do an experiment, and mm. this is always exciting. I love it when Brian comes on the show because he's keen to show us hands-on science, and this does get people, I think, excited and involved. What can we demonstrate? This is something to do with the universe, isn't it? Well, you've, you saw the story of this comet, ISON, 
that, that, that almost was, was going to be one of the most miraculous comets, a medieval-style huge comet. So a big flaming but, flat yeah. in the sky. And, and it was on its way into the sun. It's a remarkable story. It began its journey probably a, a, a million years ago or more in something called the Oort Cloud, which is a big sort of cloud of dirty snowballs, basically, that, that orbits the sun, um, perhaps out to a light year, so a quarter of the way to the nearest star. And it's thought that um, it, it, one of them got disturbed somehow and began a journey in Rimmer a million years ago. So it's been on its way for a million years. And they start heating up as they approach the so sun. So was it made they of ice then? It was frozen. It's mainly ice and rock. And, then, and people are interested to know, does it have organic compounds, you know, the building blocks of life? But this thing came so close to the sun, it went within a million miles of the sun. The sun is 6,000 degrees at its surface, so it, it didn't survive as it came around. But we're going to make a comet. Make a comet. Uh, which, in the which is potentially going to be edible, because I know that that's uh, the only way to keep you interested. I am. So you can, you can eat it afterwards. But then we're going to simulate the death of a comet. Well, you're bringing me down again now with that. <laughs> well, you know, everything dies, including the universe. Well, that's made me feel cheerful again. <laughs> Things get worse. <laughs> Jack is right. His face is a perfect expression of something called the second law of thermodynamics, which <laughs> essentially says that everything, <laughs> everything is going to, statistically speaking, decay away. Wow. To, to, uh, and the, the fate of the universe is ultimately, ultimately dire. And that, that, to me, that, if I was teaching thermodynamics to my students now, I'd just show them that picture and go, that's the fate of all of us. Wow. <laughs> that's what it's been all over. So it's Tom, it's Tom, Tom Daly is the more cheerful first law of thermodynamics, where... Well, everything's great. It is defying the laws of physics at the moment, but it, eventually, eventually... Oh, Tom, look to your left and look at your future. <laughs> Jack's the more scientifically accurate of the pair. <laughs> okay. So, Brian, lead the way. We've got the equipment yes. already out over here. So we're going to try and make a comet. That's right, isn't it? We're going to make a comet. And it's a little bit dangerous, so we'll... Um, safety goggles on. Safety goggles. Rubber gloves on. So comets are dirty snowballs. Why is it a dirty snowball? Well, it'll have bits of rock in it. Um, but, it but it's the most ancient stuff. So it's in sterile the solar system. compared to... Yeah. What you saying? So, so we thought we'd make one with... with um, cream and th this actually and then and then this you can put it, this is this is minus 200 degrees this is liquid nitrogen so it's liquefied air if you want to think of it like that <laughs> don't do that minus 200 degrees so if, if, if don't don't don't. Well, that's all right, because I've got a protective glove on. <laughs> yes, minus, it's minus 200 degrees man look uh, look at that Just throw a bit in there give it a stir mm. that'd be great so the, we're, we're making a cut you'll What's this? I don't know. Some of that in. This is actually... This what is actually, that you just put in there? I have no idea. <laughs> I think it's had a, so this is a dirty snowball. So we're going to be... Actually, this technique was first used to... I'm, I'm telling you, it's a cookery programme. Yeah. This was first used to make ice cream, I was told, in 1901. No, the idea is that comets are, comets are much colder than this. This is minus 200. Can I fit it with my hand this yeah, one? You can touch it. Wow, that is super cold. You can eat it. Be careful, actually. I don't know whether you can Ooh. eat it. I don't know. <laughs> Without some safety. <laughs> it's good. It's delicious. Creamy. Creamy death from above. <laughs> Tom, <laughs> let's get Tom Daly here to help. Tom, come on out and help us make our delicious death from above. Yeah, hold it. Tom needs gloves. Tom, you need some gloves as well. Let's stick okay. a bit more of that in. Hold it. Let him get started here. Let's uh, have we got some more cream? Okay. Chocolate. Oh, oh. Okay, goggles. I never wear goggles. <laughs> okay, you've got to stir it. So that's our comet. So, so there's vast amounts of that stuff. Not literally that stuff, because that's milk and there are no cows okay. out there. Anything. But it's a vast amount of stuff frozen solid, much colder than that out okay. there in the Oort cloud. Right. And what we thought we'd demonstrate, uh, because it's dangerous, ah. is what happens when... So this is boiling water. And what... A, a good approximation to what happened to the comet <laughs> is that we're going to put some minus 200 degrees Celsius <laughs> liquid nitrogen into uh -huh. the boiling water and try and simulate what happened to comet ice on it's just a few days to Tom ago. as well. Explain. So actually, <laughs> so this oh is wow. hot. Hey, before you do, Tom, have a slug of that. That's good. What's in there? 
I can't drink cream. I'll put on about ten million pounds in like one sermon. What's wrong with you? Have a bit of cream. <laughs> You know, I were on the vodka back there. Should yeah, I not say that? Yeah, it's true, yeah, it's true. Is that, is that your, your trainer going to get very upset? Why don't people double a, cream like, more often? Of it's delicious. <laughs> <laughs> it's delicious. Tom, you sure you don't want some of this double cream? I'd rather eat this. Treat yourself to a bit of ice cream. Go on. I'll try a bit. This is my favourite thing, by the way, so... It's like... So that's been cooled down to minus 200 or so. Pretty good, isn't it? Good, though. We'll knock it down with a bit of this. This is good. <laughs> I know, honestly, I'm re Maybe pour, pour a bit on top. Oh, yeah. There we go. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. There's, only, there's only one way. There's only one way to stop him. That's I'll <laughs> stop him. Right. <laughs> That's done. <laughs> right. Yeah, so, you well, say that, but I like a challenge. <laughs> <laughs> OK, so, so what are we going to so, do? So we're going to simulate what happens to Commie Ice Sock. Set back a little Hold bit. Hold it. So, actually, you can do it. <laughs> so, this is, this is what happens when it... So when these comets, frozen solid, snowballed, minus 200, minus less than that, comes in towards the sun, heats up rapidly, and what happened to ice on was it exploded and fell to bits. So 300 degree temperature difference between they're these not gonna, They're not going to get so along. what... Either <laughs> this is going to explode... <gasps> this is going to explode, and it's going to... Listen there. You ready? Yeah, yeah. Do you want to put some of this with me as well? We're gonna... yeah, well, okay, here we go. Don't put your head over it, though. Don't put your head over it. <laughs> All right, you ready? Is the lights went for Exploding comet. Shall I move this out of the way? What if that goes? Hey, what is going on here? What is going on here? We'll move that out of the way first. <laughs> <laughs> Brian, it's alright for you, but we're national treasures. <laughs> Alright, here we go. You ready? Go on. So this is like a comet in space. Three, you ready? 300 degrees on its way to the All sun. All of it? Oh, look at Go on. Oh! Yeah. <laughs> wow. That's pretty good. Pretty good. Oh, man, I really wish we could have, like, a Genesis track playing there. Like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> OK, let's go for it. Let's go for it. We've got the giant tub of doom. <laughs> you want that yeah, let's go. This is all filled with that stuff. OK. OK, so look, hold it. Before you do that, I'm going to say good night now, just in case. <laughs> That's all my guests this week. Next week on the show, I'll be joined by star of Elf and Anchorman, Will Ferrell, from X-Files and the full, the gorgeous and talented Gillian Anderson. David Beckham will be here in person. And we've got music from singing superstar Leona Lewis. So before we go to the music, let's see if we can blow up the studio. Ryan Cox, ladies and gentlemen. Tom Daly.